Hey community, we've got an awesome episode for you today. Austin Ryan from The Worship Catalyst joins Matt to share his top seven values that every worship team and worship leader should have. I love this episode. We hope you enjoy it. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Loop Live. My name is Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com and the host of the Loop Live show. And today we've got a very special guest. We've got Austin Ryan. He's the founder and director of Worship Catalyst and the Worship Leader Essentials podcast. And today we're going to talk about the seven values worship leaders and teams have to have. So I'm really excited to dive into this conversation. Wherever you're watching from, we might take some live questions if we get some good ones. So type them into the chats, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Also make sure you hit the like or subscribe button wherever you're watching to stay tuned for more Loop Live interviews. But without further ado, here's Austin. All right, Austin, what's up, man? Hey, Matt. Good to see you again, bro. How you been? Thanks for joining us on this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my privilege, man. Super excited to be able to share a little bit today. So give us all a background on who you are, what you do, what is Worship Catalyst? Yeah, man. Uh, So yeah, Austin Ryan, 15 years ago, we started this ministry, Worship Catalyst, because uh, in the Back then, uh, what we were seeing, we were in like a pretty established church that we'd been in for almost a decade and, you know, kind of a big creative arts team and all. And we noticed that in the church plant community and in the small church community, that there were very few opportunities for worship leaders, you know, non-paid or, you know, very, very part-time kind of thing to get the kind of training and and um, help that they needed, you know, just on the field. Yeah. And so we, so we started this ministry to basically serve churches like that. And so um, we have teams of people in 18 cities around the country uh, who are there specifically t- for no charge to help young churches and small churches to just get better at what they do and as it relates to worship ministry. That's really awesome. And you yeah, have man. the Worship Leader Essentials podcast where you do a bunch of interviews um, yep. on there. How long have you been doing that podcast? Uh, let's see. We have about 70 episodes, I guess. I think we started it two years ago, maybe something like that. And uh, yeah. And we also have a... We also have on Instagram a thing called 60 Seconds on Worship. It was two minutes on worship, but we cut it in half. And it's basically what we realize is that the kind of the theology of worship gets lost a lot of times in all of the stuff that we do as uh, worship leaders and in churches. And so we just started to create a weekly 60 second story of what does the Bible say about worship and various scriptures throughout uh, throughout the Bible. And so uh, that's another thing on Instagram that streams every week. So. That's great. Well, make sure you guys go check that out. So we're going to talk today about the seven values worship leaders and teams have to have. So yeah. why, first of all, why do you think it's important for worship leaders to even communicate clear values with their teams? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, um, you know, on a negative side, people are going to people are going to come up with their own things if we don't share them. OK, so there's this story. So there's a story I sometimes talk about in getting to trying to get to my dad's house. So my dad and my mom, they lived in the mountains of Colorado for a long time. And one time we were going to go visit them for Christmas. And my dad said, just get here before dark because the weather's really bad and the roads are bad. And so we started driving up, up to Colorado from in the, at the time we lived in Arizona. And uh, I, I got about 15 miles from my dad and mom's house. Um, and it, um, and I hit this patch of ice and started spinning and then ended up with the car flipping out off the road into this pasture over this fence. Wow. And the goal, the only goal was to get to my dad and mom's house before, uh, <laughs> before dark. And I didn't get to the goal because I got off the road, right? Because I couldn't yeah. stay on the road. And that's just, that's like maybe a really simple story or metaphor, but here's the thing. Our goal in worship ministry as worship leaders is to go to God and take other people with us. That's it. It's pretty simple in, in all of, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but at the end of the day, we just want to go to God ourselves and take other people with us. And so, yeah. If we get off of the road towards that goal, we'll never get there. And so we see values as guardrails. You know, values are basically boundaries or rules that keep us on this path towards our goal of going to God and taking other people with us. And so, and so, um, I think from a negative standpoint, people are going to make up their own rules if we don't if we don't share them together. From this is kind of a negative side, maybe. And then from a positive standpoint. When you have a team that embodies all of the same values, all of the same guardrails that keep us on this worship goal, mm-hmm. then when we add other people onto the team, we've seen this over and over again. 
if, if, if somebody comes on the team, let's just say, and they've got an attitude or they're prideful or, you know, maybe they, they want to get all the good roles or whatever it might be. And they walk into a team that just kind of shares the value of humility, you know, and everybody just kind of lives that out. Then they stick out like a sore thumb. And so they've got two choices. They can either come in line with that and, and really become humble. And that usually takes a while, obviously, because it's a lifelong journey. But like yeah. a lot, of, I don't know about you, Matt, but a lot of people that come on to teams have come on from bad teams, you know, from teams yeah. that have just struggled in various ways. But right. if they get into something healthy, they either have to become what the team is or they have to find somewhere else to go, you know, because they just stick out. It's, it doesn't fit who they are. And so yeah. the good thing is, oh, I'm, I'm telling you that embodied values on a team win over, over you know, attitudes or, or experiences that people have had in the past. They almost always yeah. do. I totally believe that. I think this topic is really interesting because I've been a worship leader for 20 years, been on staff at a lot of churches. And I'll tell you, I've actually never been on a worship team or worship uh, ministry where they actually do have values or at least Mm. expressed values. And so this is the first time I've actually ever heard this. I've heard values for sure in in business. I've heard values before in church, like as the church Mm -hmm. uh, organization, but I've never heard it actually expressed in worship team. So you've got seven values that you've come mm-hmm. up with. Now, are these values that you used at a church or where did these values come from? Yeah, these values came from experience of just what are the what are the seven things or what are the things that we want to live by? What is it going to take yeah. for us to stay on the path towards the, the worship goals that we have as a ministry? And these are the ones that emerged over time. And so these are the ones that we've been yeah. communicating for a really long time. So there's seven of them and let me read them. And then we're, and then I want you to give us just a quick overview of each one. So we've got excellence, creativity, unity, humility, authenticity, evangelism, uh, evangelism and party party. That's an interesting one. All right. So give us an overview of all of these values starting with excellence. Yeah, you bet, man. Excellence. I think the word excellence probably got hijacked a really long time ago and it became perfectionism or perfect lighting or you get on stage at the right time or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so what what I really think when we talk about obedience to God and whatever we do in excellence is doing the best you can with what you have. Right. So yeah. uh, that means that a small church can actually be more excellent than the mega church with the billions of dollars because they're actually maybe potentially doing the best they can with what they have. And so mm-hmm. we're looking at excellence from the way God sees it, not the way the people sitting in the crowd see it. Right. right. And so that is that we're giving him our all in everything that we do. Um, creativity, man, look, it starts at the beginning of scripture, Genesis one, one, God created. So he introduced himself as creator God. And then in verse, in, in, in verse 27 of chapter one, says that we were made in the image of God, which means that we were made creative. Like we were made creative in the image of a creator. And so if we don't do creative things, and if we're not expressing our creativity in the way that we serve him, we're not living up to the, to the potential that God gave us. We're not living up to the character that God gave us. And so that's an important value that we have to stay within, or we're not even, we're not, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, isn't it cool too, that God also let Adam name the animals, which was a very creative Uh, spin cool, yeah. as well like create you're right creation creating was from the beginning i love that all right yeah. sorry to interrupt okay keep going so the next one you uh, know. That, i love that about about i never thought about that that's a good thing man about adam so he he like he gave us that role right at the beginning that's yeah. awesome um and then he lets us do cool things like invent loop community so beautiful yeah. it's awesome yeah it's all part of the same thing it is. Um, yeah, unity, unity obviously is really important. I mean, I think we would all kind of know what disunity brings on. Um, unity is, is, um, uh, unity is probably unique to what a lot of people think it is though, because a lot of people consider unity to be relationships, you know, Hey, we're unified because we haven't fought in a while, or we're unified because yeah. we have a good time hanging out together, but unity is really based on mission. Okay. And so what is our shared mission? And then our relationships kind of come around that mission and unity emerges. So we say it where unity equals relationship plus mission. It's not just relationship itself. So yeah. that's the overview of what, uh, what unity, unity is on that. So 
Uh, as far as humility goes, man, this is rooted in Philippians two, and, and I love I love these values, honestly, man, because like they're all rooted in Scripture, and they're all just biblical things. It's not like we're coming up with yeah. some sort of corporate corporate language or whatever. But um, Philippians two, you know, consider others better than yourselves, and so we that's just a beautiful thing to be able to look at somebody else and say, hey, you're important. You're more important than me. You know, you're more important than me. That's yeah. what that means. And, and what that means is we serve one another, and we we give each other the good parts, and we. <laughs> Uh, we we turn things down to lift other people up and stuff like that, you know. And you know, I think that church bands are an incubator of pride. You know, mm-hmm. there's just something about the stage or the lights or the 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 a- accolades that we get. And it probably didn't used to be this way back in the days when my dad was a worship leader and he had choirs and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't quite as much like that, but. Yeah. It seems like pride is just such a big problem. And so what, what we're learning is if we can wake up every day and say, it's not about me, man, this whole thing is not about me and believe it mm-hmm. and embody it. It's not about me. The song's not about me. My part is not about me. The role I play is not about me. I can rotate in and play once every two months or I can play every week or I can play the right. guitar one or guitar four or keyboard one or keyboard four. It doesn't matter because right. it's not about, never was about me, you know? And so that's, that's humility. Um, authenticity, uh, you know, I think, I think at the end of the day, authenticity is words matching life, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can be said about John chapter four, when Jesus said to the woman at the well, you know, the worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. And certainly truth is Jesus. And certainly truth is, um, you know, truth is the truth of theology and the truth of the gospel and all these kinds of things. But one of the things truth is, is just being honest and being true. You know what I mean? And so mm. we aren't being very authentic to God if we sing songs about surrender and yielding and all those things when our our lives are not matching up to that. And so right. we have to, as worship leaders and as worship teams, have this value of I'm going to be honest to God. And I'm going to be yep. honest to each other as well. I'm going to be authentic vertically and horizontally, you know? Yeah, that's good. Uh, and then evangelism, uh, you know, there's over 6,000 people every hour uh, that that die in the world. And um, I think the question that we have to ask ourselves, and this may be a strange question for people to think about from a worship leading perspective or worship team perspective, but the question is, whose problem is that? What's like who needs to be thinking about things like um, what is people's eternal salvation look like? Because if, if the if the gate really is narrow that leads to life and the gate really is wide that leads to destruction, then, then the majority of those 6,000 people that pass away every single hour are not going to end up with Christ. Mm-hmm. And so, and so like, does that weigh on us? And if it does, then what can we what can we possibly think about doing about that? You know, when Jesus left us on on earth, he said, like some of the last few things he said, you're going to be my witnesses. Jerusalem, mm-hmm. Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And he said, uh, as you go, make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He never said, hey, worship me. That's, your, that's why I'm leaving you on earth. And that's an important, huge, big deal. What he left us to do is be missionaries. What he left us to do is be evangelists. And so mm-hmm. how does worship and worship ministry play the role of evangelism? And, right. uh, and, and if we don't have that as a value, as a guardrail, as a rule that we're going to be evangelistic, both individually and as a team, then we've kind of left the mission, the calling that God gave us in the first place. So how is worship going to be authentic if we say no to the initial mission that we were given in the first place? Wow. Um, then the last value is party and it's not really based on a whole lot, except that if I'm going to be doing ministry, you know, five, 10 years with some of the same people, and if we're going to have a good time, uh, or if we're going to, we're going to make memories and all that kind of stuff, it's going to be because we had a good time together, you know? And so I think that that spirit of just enjoying what we do, you know, people can play and sing anywhere. There's a billion places people go play and sing. And if you want them to play and sing on our, on my team, then I'm going to make sure that we have a good time doing it. Yeah. I love that party one too, because I just think about some of the worship teams I've been on and some of my favorite memories in worship ministry were when I was with teams that we could party together. And, you know, you're with each other all weekend long, sometimes all, almost all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and you've got to be able to hang together and enjoy each other's company. And, but it really takes the leader setting that tone and, you know, planning the conversation maybe to kick it off or like the, uh, the pizza or bringing the food or like getting people to go out and actually have hang out together instead of just dispersing and right. know, spending their own time alone somewhere around the church. Like you really have to, as the leader kind of lead that part. Um, until people kind of, you know, feel comfortable and where they can party without you. <laughs> but and it's it's really interesting, too, because a lot of times uh, worship leaders and creatives in general are not necessarily party people. You know, yeah. some of them are. and But a lot of them aren't because there's a little more introvert, you know, introvert yeah. or they're, you know, I just need to be by myself and recharge and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so and, and so there's a there's the challenge there of the personality types and understanding and, and all that. Yeah. So, right. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes party is easy and sometimes it's work. You know? Yeah, right. So are there any of these values that you feel are more important than others? Or should they all be implemented equally? Yeah, it's a good question. And and we get asked that question all the time. And and here's here's the thing about it. If you get outside of any of the values, you've gotten outside of all of them. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, the, the goal is not to keep the values in place. The goal is to worship God, to go to God and take other people with you. And so if evangelism gets you off track, you didn't get there. If unity gets you off track, you didn't get there, you know? And so, however, I think there's one value that holds all the rest of them together. And that value is unity. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, like I said, it's not a ranking. It's just more of a cohesion because yeah. disunity affects excellence. And disunity affects creativity and it affects authenticity, it affects humility, it affects all of them. Yeah. And so we, we need to focus on that one a lot and all the time. And in fact, we have a, a like a, a process of leadership that we that we help churches to walk through with their ministry team so that they can have a leadership structure that makes sense. And one of the roles that we have is somebody that focuses on unity all the time. That's all they do is focus on the unity of the team. But there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, unity, you know, we don't even have church if we don't have unity. Like at best, we have a social, like some sort of social club that's not even run all that well. You know what I mean? Right. right. (laughs) It's got, it's got, you know, fairly good music and, you know, some sort of motivational speech, but it's not church because, you know, because if you look at, if you look at scripture, you don't have evangelism if you don't have unity, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, you don't have worship if you don't have unity. I mean, what in Matthew chapter five, Jesus, he says, don't even come to me with your gift, with your offering, unless you get the relationship fixed. Like, I'm not going to pay attention yeah, right. to it. So why would you even offer it? I mean, we're wasting everybody's time if we're trying to have church and lead them in music and singing when there's disunity on the team or in the church or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, hmm. blessing in First Peter chapter 4 comes from unity and anointing from Psalm 133 is in the, in the place is when unity is there, anointing is there. And why why would you even have church without the anointing of the Holy spirit, the presence of God? I mean, seriously, at that point, I really would. I mean, like send people to other churches because you're wasting their time and you're wasting their money and you're wasting God's time. So just get unity, right. Or don't, or don't, don't, don't work on anything else. Your new drummer or your new effects pedal or, you know, whatever yeah, is not going right. to fix is not going to fix unity. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So if a worship leader that's listening to this is wanting to implement values and maybe yeah. these values, how should they start communicating that to the team? And how do you actually start living these out with your team? Any tips that you have on how to actually implement these? Yeah, that's really good, man. The, um, the first thing I would say really just a couple of things on this. And one of them is live them out. Okay. That like as a leader, before you even start to communicate them, live them, embody them. Okay. And give that some time because if you're outside of the rails on like, maybe you're struggling with pride, get that under control before you go and start talking to the, to the community, to the band and the team about that um, or whatever the value is. But then the second thing from a real practical standpoint, uh, we created a resource to help churches do this. Um, You don't have to use this resource, but, the, the reason we created it is because worship leaders would say to us like, um, Hey, I've got this person and they're not practicing. They're coming unprepared. So they're not doing the best they can with what they have. They're not living excellently around us. Yeah. So what should I do? Should I approach them alone the group? How's that work? And we, and we kind of said, well, what have you communicated about that? 
Uh, because if you've never communicated the rules or the guardrails, then how are they going to how are they going to know to live up to them? And what language would they even have to be able to communicate that? It just sounds like you're coming down on them for something they don't even know that exactly mm-hmm. what they're supposed to do. Right. And it's not just you're practicing because you're supposed to practice. No, you're practicing because it, because excellence is spiritual. You know, it's like a response to God. And so anyway, we created a resource for that. It's a book called The Radical Worship Solution. And, you know, several hundred churches have, have taken this book with their bands and their creative arts teams and have just read it. And at the end of all the chapters, it's, it's all through the values is what the book is. And it goes straight through each value and has a lot of stories and a lot of language around it. And then at the end of every chapter, it has questions that the team answers together. So it's like a group book uh, really is what it is. And so then at the end, at the end of that, then it's got like ways that people can individually check their own lives, like ask questions of yourself every day about these values and ask questions of yourself every week about these values, just to make sure everybody's in check. And then yeah. going forward, when somebody gets outside those boundaries, there's language. And we all, we all communicated this. We all agreed to it. We all like articulated what this means to us personally and as a group. Yeah. And so it's a lot easier to do it that way. So uh, that's the best resource that we have uh, for that. It's something we created exactly for that. Where can they find that? It's available at Amazon. It's called the Radical Worship Solution. And cool. uh, and uh, yeah, it's on Amazon. Just get, get it. You can go to worshipcatalyst.com and reach out to us if you've got a big group, because we could probably get yeah. you a group discount if you have, you know, 10 or more that you want to yeah. that you want to buy. Let's dive in as we close up this conversation. Let's dive in on two of those values. Uh-huh. And because I'm kind of looking at these values and I can see very clearly how, you know, excellence can be implemented on a team. And I'm thinking about like your bass player, like Joe, like my bass player, Joe. I can see why, how he can totally grab onto excellence and really make that a value. I can see that with unity, humility, for sure. That's, that's a massive one. Authenticity. You know, we all want to be authentic. The party part, for sure. But the two that I'm thinking of, how do I really get Joe, the bass player, to really encompass those values are creativity and mm-hmm. evangelism. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about creativity first. And for a bass player on a team, is the creativity one just more of like a broad paintbrush stroke value of like, hey, we're we're doing music. You're being creative by playing music. Is that the idea behind the creativity? Or is it that you're actually giving the bass player re- free reign on, I don't know. <laughs> play, play whatever riff you want yeah. to all over the place. Yeah. So, how does a bass player, how does Joe encompass creativity? Yeah. So, you know, I think there's a couple of, I think there's two kind of broad categories of creativity and one of them's micro creativity and one of them's macro creativity. Okay. Yeah. So something like macro creativity might be something that everybody in the crowd knows that something creative just happened. You know what I mean? Whether it be musical or whether it be, you know, I don't know, horses or guitars, you know, or uh, like motorcycles just came in the aisle or whatever it might be. Like everybody's like, wow, something just happened. Yeah. Uh, or musically, maybe you turned a song that everybody's heard one way into a country song or an R and B yeah. or you know something like that. But the yeah. micro creativity thing, I think, is something that I think everybody can express within the context of every song. Okay, mm-hmm. not just by nature of playing the G note and the C note and the you know for the for the bass player, but it's more like what movement did you create to to make the song better. And and nobody in the crowd is probably going to go, whoa, did you hear what the bass player just did? Nobody's going to know that unless they're a bass player. Yeah. But God's going to know that the bass player, Joe, took his, um, he took the instrument and the gift and he created something interesting out of it. And it was a moment of worship because he was expressing God in him. That's kind of what I would say about that. Yeah, I love that. That's great. So what about evangelism? How does Joe, the bass player, and uh, utilize evangelism. I think there's a couple of um, things here. One of them's pretty simple and one of them's controversial. Okay. So I'll just say yeah, that at the yeah. beginning. <laughs> um, I think it's a pretty common conversation. I love it when, when creative arts teams are just sitting around talking about their friends that don't know Jesus, that they're sharing the gospel with, you know, it's yeah. just a personal, yeah. a personal thing because um, it helps us all remember what our true mission is, you know, Mm -hmm. if we're having those conversations. Um, And so I think that's something the worship leader can do to remind Mm -hmm. everybody, Hey, what we're really about here at the end of the day, 
is if people worship God, then they're going to be more yielded to his will for their lives, which means that they're going to go out and share the gospel more. And if we are worshiping mm-hmm. more personally on stage and all and in our lives, then one of the expressions of that worship is going to be to talk about Jesus or we don't yeah. we either talk about him or we don't we didn't care about him in the first place because we talk about what we care about. But the second thing that's a little more controversial <clears throat> is this idea of potentially having far from God people um, on our teams at various yeah. levels, you know, w- whether they be instrumentalists yeah. or technologists or whatever. Missionary and dating have, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if we, yeah. and if we have that, that far from God guitar player yeah. on yeah. stage with us, it reminds us all the time yeah. why it is that we're doing what we're doing. And it keeps that value up. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're all a part of God's kingdom mission. Yeah. And um, it just keeps it right in front of us a little bit more. I. I actually, I love that because I've, I've seen the effects of that, um, of mm-hmm. even having maybe a drummer or a keyboard player who's not a Christian on the team, mm-hmm. but I've mm-hmm. seen the transformation that actually can happen of them being welcomed into the community. The church is being the church. The church is doing what the church really should be doing. You know, it's exactly. not a social club, like you were saying earlier, yeah. uh, but no, like we are evangelizing. Like we're bringing people in. And we're welcoming them. They're at the table with us. And you know what? When they start seeing us live out all these values, they start to see that they really want to be a part. And I've seen that happen. I've seen major transformation happen in people. I can think of just a few even stories uh, just in the history of Mm -hmm. me leading worship of that. This one, I personally, this is my favorite evangelism as a value because I don't think that many worship leaders think about that. And it really just takes being mindful of... Also, I, I love the idea too that when you know when you're on stage, like looking out and seeing that every person, like that's a person, that's a soul, that is a life, mm-hmm. and you don't know what their story is, you don't know what they're going through, what they're facing, you don't know how long they're going to be around or if they're going to die tomorrow. Um, yes, and there's something really powerful that we need to remember about music has power, and and worship times can really transform someone's life. Like people can sense the Holy Spirit in a worship service and it could totally change the trajectory of their life and bring them closer to God. And maybe they were completely far away or they didn't know, but like it can be a life transforming and we can't forget that. Like there is, and it's a huge privilege and an honor that we even Mm. get to be a part of that. You know, that's the humility part comes, Mm. comes in, right? Yeah. Of like, God, like, wow, you're using us to, to be able to do this, to be a part of this story. And I think it's just being mindful that this is not a social club, you know, not a country club. Like this is, we're, we're leading people to Christ in yeah. what we're doing and the importance Absolutely, of it. Man. So I love that. That's my favorite one. Cool, man. Um, I think it is. Austin, too. Austin, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us on this. Where bet, can man. people find you? I guess we already said it, but we'll say it again. Where can people find you if they want to get more resources? Totally, man. If they go to worshipcatalyst.com, uh, everything is right there. There's courses there. You can get to the podcast there. You can get to the 60 seconds on worship and it can remind you to go to uh, Amazon and buy radicalworshipsolution.com. And then the there's a lot of free resources as well on there, but the um, also on Instagram and Facebook, it's at Worship Catalyst. So all yeah. those places. All right. Well, it was great seeing you again. Thanks for taking the time. Hopefully we'll connect again soon. I hope so, Matt. God bless you, man. See ya. Yeah. God bless. See ya. All right, you guys, great conversation with Austin. We're talking about seven values worship leaders and teams have to have. Make sure you go check out Worship Catalyst. Make sure you check out their podcast. Also, in the chat, type down, if you have values at your church or on your worship team, type down what those values are. I would be very curious to see what values people are implementing in their worship teams across the world. So type those into the chats and the comments, wherever you're watching. I want to hear your values. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe or like button. Share this with worship leaders you think will find it helpful so you can stay tuned also for future Loop Live events. And thanks for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt McCoy. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. Hey, it means so much to us when you let us know what you thought. Write down in the comments what you learned from this episode, anything else that you found encouraging from this episode. Glad you guys are listening to the podcast. Hope to provide to you a lot of helpful content as you lead worship. See you soon. Thank you.